subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel 10s now i'm making this video for potential upgraders from the 2016 iphone se to the iphone 10s now cross shopping these phones are probably not likely because such a difference in price gap but there might be that rare individual out there who's like should i get the se or the 10s this could help you as well but this is more for people who have an se and are deciding should i go to the 10s that's why this video is being created let's begin with the key specifications between both devices all right so let's talk about the key upgrades if you're coming from the smaller se over to this 10s now the se does have a four inch retina display this is more like what steve jobs liked back in the day with the smaller iphone it's more classic iphone more of a one-handed kind of feel but it was an lcd panel 326 pixels per inch to me it was never that bad of a screen for a screen this small now coming over to this guy you will jump up to a 5.8 inch you know super amoled amoled style display similar to what you see on a samsung phone when it comes to you know having good contrast ratio now also you will upgrade in the processor department you're going from an apple a9 cpu all the way up to an apple a12 bionic chip so you go past the a10 fusion past the a11 bionic and all the way up to the a12 so a significant performance improvement especially in the area of gaming video editing as well as just everyday raw horsepower so you have a lot more longer lasting phone here in the iphone 10s and it's just much more of a close to a macbook level performance whereas the se is a very powerful pocketable phone but it cannot match the iphone 10s when it comes to its raw performance now another massive upgrade from the se over to the 10s is going to be the cameras we'll talk more about them later but you have a 12 megapixel eyesight camera but the big thing here between these two phones is that you go over to not only a dual camera for the iphone 10s over here you also get a much larger sensor here one over three inch sensor and one over 2.55 inch if you don't know what that means basically let's more light in much brighter photos than the iphone se also you have a telephoto lens that can go ahead and get very nice zoom shots for this phone and you could shoot it up to 4k 60. so there's a lot of camera improvements if you upgrade from an se to an iphone 10s now you'll also go from two gigabytes of ram to four gigabytes of ram here for the 10s and you will upgrade when it comes to the battery capacity you have a much larger battery capacity here for the 10s it goes up from about 1624 on the SE to 2658 milliamp hours for the 10s so it's a nice jump in battery capacity now in the real world performance the 10s definitely lasts significantly longer than the SE so those are your key spec upgrades from the SE over to the 10s all right so in terms of the body the build and the design you're coming from a much lighter 113 gram phone to 177 grams and this is an aluminum phone with glass inserts at the top and the bottom a lot of people love this design here for this phone coming over to the 10 series design in the 10s glass on the back glass on the front you do have wireless charging and you do have a cutout for the notch here which does give you face id you lose the touch id from the se to come over to face id which authenticates in apps and it's more secure but it's not as efficient when it comes to just being able to pull out of your pocket and just already be in your phone so there you go with the body and the design a much lighter phone here for the se one hand ability is, is available for this phone so you can just like one hand everything and you do have much thicker bezels this is a massive change so if you're coming over to a 10s it's going to feel like a much larger device and also a much different design it also feels a lot more fragile in the sense of not that it's weak or anything it just feels like if you drop it you'd be a little nervous to crack it more so than the se which might get a little ding in the corner or of this phone or something like that you also lose the headphone jack on this design coming over to the iphone 10s this has been gone since the iphone 7 series if you haven't been upgrading since your se then you're probably going to miss not having that headphone jack anymore but you do trade it off for much much louder speakers on the external so if you like listen to your audio without headphones you're going to love the upgrade to the iphone 10s they're much louder speakers overall in terms of design it's a still a pretty manageable phone in the iphone 10s i just think the se is a lot easier to pocket a lot easier to deal with on the day to day but the 10s is not hard it's not that big of a phone i think it's manageable it's not like the 10s max but coming to this guy be ready for a significant design change i think it's worth the upgrade to come to this because 
the SE design is probably likely not coming back. So just staying on it is kind of re like resisting the future of the iPhone. So if you don't want to use Apple no more than stay with your SE, but if you feel like you're going to be in this ecosystem for a while, you might as well just get used to this design or at least wait till the next one when they take off the notch. Maybe it'll be the next series. Maybe it'll be a little bit smaller, maybe a series after that. All right. So I want to discuss a little bit more about the displays on these phones. So you know, a lot of people have told me in the past that the SE is just too cramped for them, and that's why they've upgraded. Many have already upgraded from this phone, but if you haven't, I'm sure you've experienced sometimes this phone being a little bit cramped. Now, you know what you're getting into when you bought an SE. You knew it was going to be small, but there's a lot of scrolling that has to be done when you're on this phone, specifically when you're in the browser and you're searching for stuff. So, like, let's say we go to Apple.com, for example. You see, like, you just got to do a lot of scrolling to read things, and a lot of this stuff happens on the SE, a lot of pinching to zooming. Coming over to this panel, it's a lot more spacious, a lot more, I would say, just useful here in 2018. So let's go over to Apple.com. You can already see just much more expansive canvas here, and that's going to be one of the main things you notice. The 10s will feel like a lot smoother display as well because it has a 120 hertz sample rate. That's what your touch, how fast it responds to your touch, is a lot quicker than the 60 hertz on the SE. It's double that, so it'll feel like a not only bigger, expansive display, but much smoother. Now, when it comes to watching video, the SE has the benefit of watching videos in 16 by 9, the standard aspect ratio they're meant to be seen in. However, it's really small to watch video content on the iPhone SE. You gotta re really hold it close to your face. Whereas over here on the 10s, it's a much larger viewing experience, but there is one downside to this display and that's when you pinch to zoom, the notch will cut into the content a little bit. A lot of people say it doesn't bother them. To me, I always look at that notch every time I pinch into zoom. So still a much larger viewing experience and coming from the SE, I think you will be happy with the display update when it comes to just watching media and content. Now, the pixels per inch is also a lot lower for this device, so the text will look sharper in most areas. You also have True Tone on this panel, which adjusts to ambient lighting conditions, and it's much more, I would say, accurate when it comes to color calibration and wide color gamut, stuff like that, P3. This one right here is really an upgrade over the SE display. You'll feel it through and through the minute you pull it out of the box. So big updates here. Also, you come over to get 3D touch here, which is quick shortcuts to your application, something you won't even get on the 10R. So huge upgrade when it comes to display. I would definitely do this jump if you want a better display. All right, so if you are upgrading from the SE to the iPhone XS when it comes to software, there's a couple key differences and they're not really in iOS. iOS is iOS on both, same features basically on both devices. What's different is the operation of the phone. So your control center is at the bottom here for the SE. You have to pull it down from the top. Now, if you have small hands, it could be a little bit of a reach here for the 10s to get up to that top, but you do have reachability. Whereas reachability on the SE wasn't even available because it wasn't really necessary. It was a small device. Now also you do have gesture navigation for the iPhone 10s over here from your button navigation, which you would just click and go through your applications like so. So if you're used to this, that was actually quite easy to do on the SE. You're definitely going to have to get used to doing a little gesture action here with the iPhone 10s. It's not hard. You just swipe up and go to the right a little bit and you're good to go. To get rid of apps, you just swipe away like that. So pretty easy to use, not that hard, but that's mainly the main difference is just the way you operate these. So should you upgrade in terms of software? I think you'll be happy with the software on the 10s and it'll feel like an actual upgrade because there's so many different ways to operate it. Whereas the going from like this to an eight plus, for example, would feel like just a really big version of an SE. All right. So in terms of performance, opening applications on the day to day is going to be a pretty similar affair for both of these. It's not really that much of a jump coming to the 10s when it comes to day to day stuff, real world applications you're going to use daily. They both open very quickly here on both. And I don't think most people had a problem with the SE's performance. It's more you want design changes. You want a different display, a more a newer feeling iPhone. But where the 10s really does show its A12 Bionic chops is in video editing, gaming performance, and just being more efficient at you making your battery last longer. So if you're looking for that, that's where the performance will be felt with the iPhone SE to the 10s. not in just everyday applications. It's not a big deal for the SE to the 10s, but a much smoother performance and much more demanding stuff will definitely blow away the SE 
on the iPhone XS. So let me talk about battery. And like, seriously, I don't know what the deal is with the SE, but when this phone first came out, I was getting amazing plus iPhone style battery life on this phone. You've seen some of my all day battery tests if you've been subscribed to this channel for a long time. This phone would just keep going and going. As more iOS updates came to this phone, the battery is no longer a beast like it once was for me for the SE. Don't get me wrong, it still can get me through a day, probably if I'm not too heavy of a user, but the battery life on here is significantly worse than it was when it first launched. However, the SE is still pretty darn good for its size. It's a pretty good battery life for its size. Coming over to the iPhone XS, you do get a bigger display, so more battery is required. I do find it to last at least an hour and a half to two hours longer every single time over the iPhone SE. And if you're having battery issues, it's likely that your SE's capacity is lower. So you might wanna check that out and get your battery replaced. But coming over to the 10s, I can definitely say you will see improved battery life on this phone guaranteed over this device. So yes, upgrade if you want better battery life. Uh, over the SE for the 10s. Okay, so let us talk about the cameras really quickly between both of these devices. First of all, iOS 12 makes these cameras launch super fast. They wanna point that out. In terms of the software, just about identical on both. You just have this little gesture to get out of there now. You do have portrait mode on this guy because of that dual camera and many different modes in here. So you do get a nice portrait mode if you like depth effect photos and you could change the blur after the fact. So the iPhone 10s is a much improved camera over the more standard basic iPhone SE camera. Now, don't get me wrong, just cause I say basic, that just means it has its basic features. You know, it's got standard 4K 30. This one has 4K and 60. So if we go down to camera here for the iPhone 10s, you're gonna see, I can put this thing up to 4K 60. Now over here on the SE, pretty good for a phone of this size can do 4K 30. But the problem with the SE was its aperture. I mean, it was just, too dark, it, it, it made photos too dark, videos too dark, in the iPhone XS, everything looks brighter and more beautiful. So you're gonna see in a minute, but you can go up to 4K 30. Now I don't like the fact that the settings are still in the menu, even on the XS, so you still gotta go through the menus to get to your camera settings. But overall, let's take a look at some photos and you can kind of decide which one you think looks better. Okay, so it's Halloween, I shot a picture of this witch really quickly here and you could see that the iPhone XS, a much more natural look. You can see how the SE blew out the details in the background, whereas the detail remained in the iPhone XS. A little bit oversaturated as well there for the SE. This is a lot more closer to the way it naturally looked. Now, I took a picture of the spider as well. A little bit more dull for the SE on this one, a little bit more vibrant for the iPhone XS. But if you take a look closely behind the spider, the detail in like this little vinyl on the house, you can see definitely a lot more detail, can pick up a lot more of that. So if you care about the little fine details, you will like the upgrade to the iPhone XS. Now here's an example of how the SE photos just look darker. Look how much more brightness is behind that construction barrier thing. You can see that there's just much more brightness there on the iPhone XS. Okay, so this photo really shows off the difference in brightness. I just point and shoot at this tree, this autumn tree, and take a look at that difference. This is what I'm talking about with the aperture. This is a huge update over the iPhone SE. The next one is a selfie photo, and you could see, look at the clouds here for the selfie photo. Look at the clouds here. They're just blown out for the SE. Now, the skin tones are pretty natural on both, a little bit more beautified, you know, on the iPhone XS. That's because of the smart HDR mode on this phone, but you can see the selfie quality massively improved, I feel, for the 10s over an iPhone SE. In this next photo, you can see there's a lot of color in here. They both did very well, but the iPhone SE, again, a little bit darker, so still I'm going for the 10s on this one. Okay, so I shot a couple of videos. Take a look at both of these right now. Overall, the cameras are definitely a big update 
to the iPhone XS, you're definitely getting what you pay for in the camera department. Still not better than like a Sony RX100, which is actually cheaper than an iPhone XS maxed out. But I do want to mention storage. Now, the SE came in a maximum capacity of 128 gigabytes. You can get 64 gigs here starting on the iPhone XS. A lot of people probably have a 32 gig SE as I do. And this one right here can go all the way up to 512 gigabytes. So massively improved storage. That's another one I do want to mention. Also, Bluetooth 5.0 comes over to the iPhone XS. IP68 water resistant. So there's a lot of miscellaneous features on this phone that improve over this guy right here. But let's discuss the big one and that is price. The iPhone SE when it first came out was targeted at the mid-range market. It was around 500 bucks or so. Depending on your country, it might've been a little bit more, but now it's more the budget iPhone. It was discontinued, so it's no longer available at Apple stores and it doesn't look like Apple's going to be bringing this phone back anytime soon. But if you're going to upgrade from an SE to an iPhone XS, you're going to pay $1,000 to start here. So you might not be used to paying that price. But I do think that the iPhone XS has many, many more upgrades over the SE that kind of justify its cost. Now, if it's still not justified for you, consider the iPhone XR that's coming October 19th for pre-order available October 26th in stores. So as it stands, if you want the top of the line iPhone you can get that's manageable in one hand, it's not the biggest you can get, I think you'll be very happy with this update from your older pocketable device. Just get used to the fact that it's no longer gonna be a tiny little phone in your pocket. You're definitely gonna feel the dense weight of the iPhone XS. It feels more premium though. So in conclusion, yes, big upgrade here from the iPhone SE. It gets my recommendations to go to it but if you're looking for a better deal, consider the 10R. What are your thoughts on the SE to the 10S? Are you totally skipping this one out? Are you keeping your SE? Are you actually going to buy an SE over a 10S? That would be quite interesting to know. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let's talk about these two right here because I think a lot of people have been holding on to their iPhones and they're upgrading this year as the 10Ss are flying off the shelf. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying, do me a favor.